So thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is Tomasz Kaczmarek. I'm from Poland, from Poznan University of Economics and Business. And uh, today I'd like to present you our paper with Kuntara Kumtuan Tong from University of Missouri. Uh, the title of the paper is Just Look Knowing Peers with Image Representation. This is a very new paper and uh, I really appreciate any of your comments. Okay, the research subject of the study are industries, or more specifically, companies and their similarities. Uh, and we introduce a new measure of, simi of similarity, which is image. Uh, I will start this presentation with the motivation for this study. Then I will explain data, the methodology that we use to uh, define industries. And then I will go to results, starting with the economic homogeneity of uh, our proposed industry classification and applications. And uh, I will go into the mechanism that support our classification. So starting with the motivation. First of all, industry classifications are very important. So from the academical perspective, they can be used, for example, for to restrict the scope of analysis, to identify control firms, to create performance benchmarks, uh, to also uh, prepare descriptive statistics on sample firms. And from the practitioner perspective, they are typically used to diversify portfolios, to create investment strategies, or also to create pre uh, to prepare multiple valuations. So. They are important, but in fact, it is not easy to find the industry classification that is best for you. Because first of all, um, the similarity, which is the most important thing in creating industries is not universal. So it is not a universal concept and depends on the context. There is no unique answer to the question on how similar is one object to another. And uh, more formally, according to the Tversky feature theory of similarity, the relative wavelength of a feature varies with the stimulus, context, and task. And uh, when it goes about the finance, we have quite a lot of uh, classifications, and they use different similarity approaches to define industries. So starting with standard industry classifications or knives, we have uh, the similar production process as a basis to define industries. Then we have global industry classification standards where the basis is typically revenue source. Uh, we have some alternatives from the academic side like Kautia and, Kautia and Rantala who propose to concentrate on common analysts that cover the same companies and use this as a similarity measure or Hoberger Phillips that is concentrated on products and uh, its descriptions in 10 Chi reports. And this is the similarity measure that is used to create this industry's classification. Mm. There are quite a lot of industry classifications and they are also quite different because Boyer et al. demonstrated that the most common industry classifications on the market uh, provides really different uh, peers, and uh, they verified that the homogeneity of industries produced with these different measures is uh, really different. And that what we think, we believe, is that these measures, in fact, missing something that is very important, which is the image representation of uh, products. So none of the existing classifications take advantage um, of that what we see just as investors, as customers with our eyes. So just by looking directly on products, we can see products everywhere, you know, on shops, on streets. So in fact, everywhere and that create our imagination about the product offering. And also on photos, because photos are also available everywhere. We can see 
TV, we can see internet, and there's everywhere representation of products offered by companies. And uh, when there's a lot of photo representation everywhere, we are also adapted as humans to process these photos uh, in an amazing way. So we can process one single image as in as short time as 13 milliseconds. We can process the image 60,000 times faster than text. And uh, we can process this quite fast. And we do that because 90% of the information transmitted to the brain is, in fact, visual. There is also a picture superiority effect that states that pictures and images are more likely to be remembered by us than words. And a single picture provides much wider narrative than, than text. So we need a lot of words to describe a single uh, a single image. Brefweil and Demand demonstrate that visual communication significantly influence human decisions. So in fact, it's not only that uh, we are so good in processing the image, but also it really impacts the decision that we make in our life. So that creates the goals of our study, which first of all is to show that identification of peers with image is superior to other similarity measure. Then to propose a new firm similarity measure, which reflects the typical method of determining peers by our human brain. And lastly, we want to construct the image industry classification that provide high economical homogeneity and application benefits. And right now, I'd like to uh, show you briefly of what we are doing in this study. So we identify objects that are very representative to companies. And then with these objects, visualized with the image, we create industries. And here on the left, we have, for example, drilling platforms that create a sort of industry here on the left. Then we have uh, machines, engines, and the representation they create another industry, or for example, trucks that we have on the right. And some more examples. On the left, we have here natural resources. Then we have consumer staples at the middle and re renewable energy mainly here on the right. So this is these are the industries that we forming. I'm just going to stop you for one second. We have a question on the floor from Tarun. Sure. Yeah. Hi. So you you in your motivation you talked about you know how our brain prefers images over text. So that part is very clear. But uh, what motivated you to choose this as a classification measure? Like what made you think that you know. Uh, using image could be superior for, for industrial classification. Uh -huh. Yes, because uh, we believe that investors see the image representation of products everywhere. So when we learn about products that are offered from different companies, that this image representation of products make a huge impact on our evaluation of similarity. So if uh, the similarity is impacted with the image, then in fact, also our beliefs about the industry's classification are impacted with it. And we show it later on how it also translates to the market. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so where is our contribution? First of all, industry classification. So we identify a new similarity measure between companies. Then from the investments perspective, our classification provides superior diversification benefits and momentum, uh, momentum strategy benefits. From the neuroeconomics, we present that human brains cluster images better than text. From the behavioral economics, we show that by using 2 million of photos from Google, we demonstrate how common photo representation impacts investor beliefs. And finally, from the machine learning perspective, we propose a unique methodology of machine learning 
to cluster photos oriented to maximize economic homogeneity between firms. So it's not like only finding similar objects, but also to some kind of sort and find only these objects that are really connected with business activity of the firm. Uh, so let me now switch to the data and methodology. Um, our data universe is quite standard. So we take uh, stocks from CRISP, um, here is one important thing. So we uh, exclude financial and services because the photos do not represent products offered to, com to companies. So when it goes about services, typical photo representation that will be people that do something. So in fact, when it goes about identification objects, we will mainly have people and uh, not these tasks that are done by this by these people. So we need to exclude it. We use photos from Google and we uh, collect representation of 2 million photos. Uh, we use the following uh, query, company name, then products uh, as a phrase, and then the period of time where we collect uh, the photos. And for each period like that, we collect 100 photos. Uh, years from 2009 to 2019, Google gives the history from 2000. Eight, but we find out that the good quality of photos is starting from 2009. And then we aggregate these photos into several periods. The first period, five-year period, is used to formulate industries. Um, and then we have uh, three periods, two-year periods, to update our industries. We also collect uh, two sets of financial ratios. First set is from Wharton Research Database. Uh, these are 70 ratios uh, representing company um, financial situation that we use to the multi-view clustering. And I will tell you about it in a moment. And the second is to evaluate results, which is uh, directly from uh, Hoberg and Phillips uh, study. Finally, our sample covers of on average 2,250 stocks per year. And here's an important question, why we use uh, photos from Google? First of all, because it aggregates photos from many sources. So it is like a common representation of different uh, photo sources. Um, it is a most common tool that we use daily to find information and also to find uh, image. So in fact, when we can think about the product offering of a company or any information about the company that I believe first tool that we will use, which will be the Google. So from this perspective, it is really a common source of information. And what we find out, it is that other sources of images are not appropriate. Why? Because um, they do not allow collection of sufficient number of photos, which is necessary to, good, to create a good classification with uh, machine learning, uh, are subjective. Um, so they are selected by companies, in fact. And uh, they usually depict emotions. And with Google, we have different sources. And what is important when we download 100 photos for each company for each period, then we uh, download the most, the best ranked photos, which are delivered by Google with uh, reliable sources, because these rankings of Google's are based on the reliability of sources. So this first part, like 100 photos, they comes from really reliable sources. But when we have 2 million of photos, obviously, a lot of them is not connected directly with uh, our tasks. So that's why we perform really powerful cleaning, starting with the mechanical cleaning, then we, uh, where we eliminate some uh, objects. So suits, for example, representing people or road signs, where we find out that typically represent logo types. We eliminate all photos with any text. We also eliminate people faces uh, and photos with graphs. And then we also perform a contextual cleaning when we create a database of uh, 
photos that are related to products. And then we clean our all database with uh, these uh, classified photos. So finally, after all those steps, we have 423,000 clean photos. And let's we now switch to the methodology. There are two main parts. First is a definition of industries. And then there, these are the updates uh, that are time varying. So starting with the definition, we use data from 2009 to 2013 to do that. Uh, first, we have a guided clustering algorithm that I define that, that I define uh, three photos um, that best describe each each firm, uh, and this is like a one view that we use to form industries. But the other view is also financial indicators of these companies that we use to let's we say update this information. So we're trying to get two views in one time one coming directly from photos and the other from uh, financials. Why it is necessary? Um, we can't perform a standard object clustering because uh, even after strong cleaning, a lot of photos represent objects not related to companies' business activity, like for example, iPhones. So uh, fine iPhones are so popular that in fact, uh, a lot of companies have iPhones on their photos. And if we would just take iPhones as objects that identify industry, then we would create a fake industry collecting all firms that are represented with iPhones. So that's why we need to link like two types of different uh, information. One, objects. So coming just typically with the computer vision and the other financial ratios. And here's the model that we created. It is the co-regularized multi-view spectral clustering that takes information from two different sources. First, these are these photos. And the other, these are financial, uh, financial ratios. So we take three photos, as I mentioned, then use convolutional neural nets to reduce in information and take the most important one. Uh, then we take the PCA to reduce this dimension finally to 20 dimensional vector. Then we concatenate these three vectors and use as the input data to the co-regular multi-view spectral clustering. Uh, so one view is here, one here. And with that, we uh, perform the clustering. And then going to another step. So this is this time varying setup. So when we define these industries, we use these clusters as, in fact, input to the classification model. So we train the convolutional neural net to classify stocks with these uh, photos from 2009 to 13. Uh, to next periods. So with the unseen uh, photos from next periods, we take the classification that is in this case based only on, on photos. So first of all, we define uh, industries with photos and financial uh, ratios, but then we update it only of photos on photos. So let me now switch to the results. So uh, we accomplish with uh, more than 1000 classified stocks. So not uh, all firms has a good photo representation to be classified with uh, this approach. But still, we have more than uh, we cover more than 60% of the aggregated uh, market capitalization. When we look deeper into our industries, we can see that uh, they vary quite strongly with the inter-industry correlations. So uh, they can be something like 50% of the correlations inside the industry or even 53% depending on the, on the industry. Then let's we look for the competitors. We compare uh, ourselves with uh, with six, so standard industry classifications with Fama and French classifications with different granularities with Nikes, Geeks, and also 
Hoberg and Phillips demonstrated with the ICODA um, abbreviation. Uh, so this is this product-based uh, classification. And we concentrate mostly on two classifications. First, it is GIGS, six-digit GIGS, that is the closest to us with the granularity. And also it was demonstrated in, uh, in the research by Boyrar et al. that it is the best uh, among competitors like six Nikes or Fama and French industry classification. And also we compare with Hoberg and Felix, uh, that is an alternative approach. There's a text-based classification. And also Hoberg demonstrated that his classification is uh, really good and perform well against uh, standard uh, classification schemes. So how we evaluate our performance? First, we um, calculate R squares by regressing firms' financial ratio on the same ratio average of the firm's corresponding industry. And we use 10 ratios using market information at Mamfte and 16 ratios using accountancy information and quarter T. And here are the results for market information. Uh, so uh, we have 10 ratios here, and in majority of them, our classification, which is here, there, there are four versions of it, of it, exactly speaking, uh, has the best results. When we compare to Geeks and, uh, and Hoberg and Philips classifications, we can see that in some cases, Geeks are better. So it's not like we are the best in every possible uh, ratio. But in the majority, uh, our classification proves to be really strong. When it goes about accounting information here, the situation is even stronger because when we compare these R squares uh, of uh, industry class of image industry classification with other approaches, then we can see that in only in two cases, in fact we are not the strongest in comparison to Geeks and Hoberg and Philips. And in two, we are, let's we say, quite similar. So let's we now switch to applications. First application that we provide, it is an industry diversification benefit. So we create a portfolio by randomly selecting one stock from each industry and measure its performance. We perform 500 trials per each industry classification. And then we also create uh, weights of those portfolio with four different settings, uh, equal weights, value, weight, uh, value weights, and optimized portfolio aimed to maximize sharp ratio or to minimize the condition value at, at risk. Uh, we hold uh, these portfolios for six years, uh, for six years, which is our out of sample out of uh, sample testing period. When it goes about the results here, they are very constant. So we are mainly concentrated on the sharp ratio, and here we have results for the um, uh, different wafening techniques. And what we can see that the sharp ratio is the highest in comparison to all other alternatives uh, in each wave fanning scheme. So it, it's really provides strong um, diversification benefits. Then we go to the industry momentum. Uh, we built momentum strategy in the same way as Maskovitz and Giblard um, by investing long or short for six months in the three industries with the highest or lowest six months momentum. Uh, and uh, we create the short term reversal strategy also to support this, uh, these findings from the typical momentum by investing long in free industries for six months with the lowest market weighted one month return. So here the re reversal strategy is the long only strategy, but we also demonstrate um, results of the long short in the appendix. And our results are also robust adjusting by volatility using Barroso and Santa Clara approach. And here are the results. Um, so. 
Again, sharp ratio is something that is the most important for us. Here we demonstrate results both for 25 uh, industries, image industries and 50 image industries. The bottom is uh, for the momentum and the lower part for the reversal strategy. And what we can see that uh, the sharp ratio is typically the highest. So it's not like with the diversif diversification that is always the highest. So for example, here, the Fama and French 70 industries give a little bit better sharp ratio. And also one classification by Hoberger Felix also gives a little bit better momentum. Uh, so the, the sharp ratio of momentum, uh, but still we are in absolutely the top of these uh, different classification schemes. And when it goes we, uh, for the reversal strategy, then in fact, even the situation is stronger because jeeps are only like a bit better uh, here than our classifications and other are much worse. So now let me now just shortly say what is the underlying mechanics that we find that support this, uh, this, uh, this, these results. So um, just to say it briefly, um, we have two investors, A and B, and in fact, they have different perspective of finding similar peers. So one investor identified peers like here, so stock one, two, and three, and the other identified peers in a little bit different way, like stock one, two, and stock four. And what we believe we identify, this is this biggest uh, common portion from these two circles um, that aggregates, in fact, demand or supply connected with investment decision of investor A and B. So investor A and B believe together that stock one and stock two is uh, are the peers. And that's why when they take investment decisions related with industry classification, they make the same decision for stock one and stock two. And investor A, for example, can have uh, the same decision for stock three and stock one, but for stock three, the aggregated demand is coming only from him, not from the investor B. So, that, B. so that's why the demand or supply for this stock will be, will be much lower than for stock one and two. So we think that the most important thing is to find this agreement about investors about uh, looking for the same peers. And we measure also this agreement. Here is the uh, quantification of it. So we uh, show how investors agree or disagree about industries in different classification. And we measure agreement as a mean value weighted bit as spread. Here is the panel, uh, panel A and mean standard deviation of BIDA spreads within industry panel B. And here also is a measure of disagreement. But to concentrate on the agreement, what we see, it is that in fact, uh, the lines that represent the image industries are typically situated the lowest, meaning that the agreement of investors that uh, stocks are classified in the same industries is the highest. And one more uh, important information about our industry classification is that it is also the most uh, dynamic, again, or other classifications. So the reclassification is quite fast. And what we find also is that there are examples where um, SIG, for example, reclassified stocks like two, three years after we identified that there are new photos that represent the new type of the uh, of the industry of, of the business of the company so let me go briefly to conclusions so we apply machine learning approaches to classify sectors by associating business with the picture representation uh, what we present uh, is that our industry classification is analogous to human brain by comparing picture similarities across companies. And we show that uh, our classifications deliver quite high 
portfolio diversification and industry momentum. Also, the economic homogeneity of industries built with image is high. Drawback, well, certainly <clears throat> we can't classify all stocks, especially services, high-tech, finance, and multi-product conglomerates. This is something that for now doesn't uh, work well with uh, image. And future studies should attempt to develop technology to identify photos presenting distinctive goods and services. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, it would be great to answer any questions.